Now this is a question. Dryopithecus pattern is characteristic feature of. So first of all, we should understand what is this dryopithecus. Uh, the dryopithecus is basically a kind of occlusal morphology uh, which is seen in the mandibular molars, and this was generally seen in the anthropoid apes. And their ancestors also. These ancestors were known as dryo. Pythesins. Okay, now what happens here uh, in this? What kind of morphology is this? Actually, there is a uh, uh, when we see the mandibular first molars, either it can be five cusp or it can be four cusp in the dryopithecines. Okay, now. Uh, if it is uh, whatever is the morphology of the cusp, uh, we should understand that the mesiobuccal, uh, mesiolingual cusp. Okay, suppose this is, uh, this is your distal cusp, this is your buccal cusp. Then we have our mesiolingual cusp, and then we have our distolingual cusp. This is distal. This is mesial. This is your mesiolingual cusp, and here is your Disto buccal cusp. Now, what generally happens? The mesiolingual cusp connects to the disto buccal cusp through the going above the floor of the central fossa. So basically, it stretches so much, and it can uh, the mesiolingual cusp and disto buccal cusp are stretching so much that they meet with each other throughout the central fossa's length, and that is what. Uh, is known as dryopithecus pattern and it is seen in permanent mandibular first molar. Okay, now uh, let's go through the explanation first. The mandibular first permanent molar. Okay, the crown of this tooth when viewed occlusally is pentagonal in shape. Okay, then there are buccal parts and lingual parts, which is uh, basically uh, divided by a fissure or the central groove. Right. Then what happens? Each cusp. Is separated by a groove which joins the mesiodistal fissure. Okay, the tips of the buccal cusp are displaced lingually, and these are rounded and are lower than the lingual cusp. So basically, the buccal cusp are lower uh, than the lingual cusp. That is important for the chewing so that we don't have cheeks uh, get cheeks within this. Now coming to the main part of this particular question. In 90% of the cases, the mesiolingual cusp is joined. To the distal buccal cusp across the floor of the central fossa, and this particular pattern is known as dryopithecus pattern. Okay, so this feature and the five cusp pattern is a term as the dryopithecus pattern, and this primitive pattern is characteristic of lower molars of the anthropoid shape as well as the dryopithecines, and this is also known as Y5 pattern. So this is very important question, and it is easy to remember that the dryopithecus pattern. It simply means when the mesiolingual cusp uh, joins the distobuccal cusp, uh, going across the floor of your central uh, groove, then it is going to be diapithecus pattern. It is generally seen in five cusp. Okay, it is seen in five cusp uh, lower molars, and that's why it is also known as Y5 pattern.